Our next guest recently wrote about the increasing role that AI systems are playing in designing, building, and refining their next generation successors. The article is titled, When AI Builds AI, the Next Great Inventors Might Not Be Human. That may be scary to some and exciting to others. George Lee is here as the co-head of the Goldman Sachs Global Institute. Good morning to you. Morning. Who wrote that paper? <laughs> right, I knew this was coming at me. Um, I, I would freely admit that the thinking behind it, the research, the, um, a lot of it came from interacting with chatbots and other AI resources. But like most of, most of these things now, it's these machines as um, you know, a, a companion, a right. thought partner, uh, helping me evolve and perfect the ideas, perhaps not perfect, but right. improve the ideas. So I think it's a great example of the fact that like, these machines are not yet able to provide the divine spark right. of, of imagination, but as a partner in developing Well, so that's the ideas. question that I'm, I'm sort of curious about. So right now, they are uh, a, a thought partner, maybe a collaborator of some kind of sort. Right. Because they're not mind readers, right? Though sometimes you think to yourself, wow. It feels wow, like it. It feels like it. Will they ever be mind readers? And that gets to this larger point that you're making in, in the paper, which is, is the next great mother of invention not really going to come from us? Yeah. I mean, one of the things that, that I tried to make clear in the paper is, first of all, the recursive self-improvement and autonomous replication of machines remains the realm of science fiction for now. <laughs> I would also observe that the salient interval between what constitutes science fiction and science reality is, is closing. But I write about how these machines can help you, you know, at every level of abstraction, um, design, construct, refine themselves. Like, in, in a way, they're bootstrapping their own improvement. Um, and so, you know, will they ever really provide that divine spark, as I said, of, of new ideas? Unclear. Mm -hmm. One thing I would observe, though, that would argue in favor of that is, you think, of what, what is the source of human imagination and innovation? It's largely combinatorial. You, know, you think about you have a bunch of domains of knowledge or collaborators, and it's that you know, combination of different perspectives that often results in an innovative right. new idea. These machines, because of their scale, because of the speed up with which they can process information, do have the prospect of providing that combinatorial spark. Okay, so if that's right, what is the implication both for businesses and business leaders who are watching us right now saying to themselves, okay, uh, that's all very interesting, but what do I do about it? And if you're an investor thinking, how am I either going to make money or avoid losing money as a result of this? What, what is the, the next step? Yeah, well, you're touching on one of the things that's, I think, super interesting in this world where we're seeing this, you know, extremely consistent, if not um, accelerating curve of innovation in the technology itself. Um, and you can see this in the cavalcade of new announcements of new models, new exploits, et cetera, that occur. And yet the enterprise value being harvested relative to that technology is lagging a little bit. So if you have that kind of a curve, the sort of adoption at the enterprise is down here. Now, I think it's going to inflect up this year. But one of the things for enterprise leaders is, you know, how can I drive change? How can I drive adoption? Um, how can I position my company to take the best advantage of it? And, you know, that's still a work in progress. What is the chance that all this technology, especially the large language models, effectively become commoditized? You know, one of the things that I hear is that there's a lot of companies now that are experimenting with an open AI or they're experimenting with Claude, which is Anthropic or Gemini, mm -hmm. effectively the paid for versions of this. And then they try to figure out the best pieces of it yeah. and see if they can do the same thing using Llama, for example, or using one of the other open source models, which they can effectively recreate for free. Yeah. I mean, I alluded to this earlier, this cavalcade of announcements. It's kind of suggestive of the fact that what constitutes frontier model performance is far more competitive. Um, you see, you know, one company will leap ahead for a moment, then largely that's replicated and caught up. Like the amount of, um, you know, the pace of equalization of this techno frontier technology is unlike anything I've seen in my 35 year uh, career. And uh, I think that does um, mandate that companies be open minded about working with multiple model providers, multiple infrastructure providers. And it also, I think, good for enterprise adoption. That quality of highly competitive frontier performance 
also is leading to a lot of price competition. Price competition right. drives down the per token cost of this capability. That's good for enterprises. We can do right. more for less. Does that end well for the large language model providers? You know, I think it remains to be seen. Um, and I think what's interesting is each of these model providers have different business model strengths or approaches to leverage. And so, um, look, if you can ride a cost curve where the per token cost of delivering that intelligence is declining sharply, and you charge a subscription for that, that's a level to increasing amount of subscription price, you're capturing all the value under that curve, that feels like a pretty good business. Right. If you can use AI like some of the other big existing hyperscalers, you can use AI to deliver value to customers, but also optimize your own business, add performance, et cetera, right. that feels like a good business. So, you know, I think it's fair to ask questions about the economics of the realm. Each one of these people has a little bit of a strength to leverage where I think there's economic value to be harvested. Okay.